Lesson 2 of Unit 1 addresses the Civil 3D user interface. Exercise 1, we address different components of the user interface. In Exercise 2, you learn about the tool space and the different tabs in the tool space. This is a very important component of the Civil 3D user interface. In Exercise 3, we discuss the panorama window, AutoCAD properties, and tool palettes. Exercise 4, there's another discussion on workspaces and in exercise 5 you learn how to create reports on civil 3d data so the ribbon is discussed in a little bit more detail than in lesson 1 once again the ribbon consists of the tabs and the panels and they are used for command access and you have both static ribbons which are always there, very similar to menus, and you also have contextual ribbons. A static ribbon is always displayed and contains the panels and commands that you would use most often, and then a contextual ribbon shows you the commands for a selected object. So in this case, a surface is selected and it displays you commands specific to manipulating a surface. We'll have another look at that in Civil 3D. If I pick a parcel object, we now have a contextual ribbon that allows you to label a parcel, modify the parcel geometry, etc. Hit Escape, and we're back to our static ribbon. The application menu for drawing related commands and then there's help. It's very important to know where to get your help from up here. You can access help. There's a number of options on this menu here to access help. If you are curious as to where a command may be located on the ribbon and you're used to prior versions of AutoCAD, the where is my command option is quite nice. So for example, if we were to look at view, the old view menu, now it's showing you where the different view-related commands can be located on the ribbon. And you also have a search here, so if I search for a point label style, the software will organize the results of the search in the context of either Civil 3D where is my command, the tutorials, workflow, and so forth. So uh, using the help is very good. If you hit F1, that will also display your help menu. And you've got a number of ways to look at the contents of the help. You have an index. You have favorites. You can search. And then you can look for information by task, by feature, by job role. So very good help system can be found in here. The tool space. This is a very important window in Civil 3D. This is the tool space over here. I'll close my layer properties man manager. Right now the tool space is in its undocked mode. I'll close it. To display the tool space you can type show TS on the command line or on the home tab palettes panel you can click tool space and if you hold your mouse over the command, you can see the tooltip displaying information. So show TS and high TS to show or display. But if I click tool space, here it is. And before we talk about the different tabs on here, a number of ways to view this. If you right click on the tool space title bar, allow docking is turned on. So that means when I pull this over to the right, it's in a docked mode. And that may or may not be desirable for you. If you double click here, it's undocked. If I right click, I can turn off allow docking and perhaps position it as such. Now it's always open. If I click this auto hide button here or right click and turn on auto hide, when I pull my mouse away, the tool space collapses. And when I expand or pull my mouse over the title bar, the tool space expands. 
and you can turn auto hide off to lock it open if you're needing to do a bunch of work in here. Another option for managing the display of this is to turn on allow docking, right clicking and then anchoring left and then the tool space is over here on the left. So it's a few ways of viewing that, uh, you know, largely dependent on personal preference and also whether or not you're working with dual monitors. So let's turn off allow docking and I'm just going to position this here and turn auto hide off. The prospector tab of tool space shows the data in the drawing. So here's my surface. Here's all my points. This is called the item view area, showing you information on the data that you've selected. If I expand sites and block parcels and expand parcels, these are all the individual parcels. If I turn this on here, this is my show preview. So now if I click on a parcel here, still can't see the preview, so we will right click on the site name, actually right click on the parcels tree and turn on show preview. And so now when I click on a parcel, it'll preview that parcel. And the nice thing in here is that you can always zoom to any data in tool space by right clicking and zooming to the data. So if I look under alignments. I have a center line alignment here. Here's 8th Avenue. And if we want to preview the alignments, I can right click on alignments and select show preview. And there's the 8th Avenue alignment. I can right click and zoom to that alignment. So the tool space tab or m menu or window and prospector tab is to show your data. And the settings tab shows you all of the styles that are used to display your data. So in this case, we're looking at surface styles and alignment styles and alignment label styles. So this is essentially where you configure all of your standardized Civil 3D items. The survey tab is used to display survey data. That can be turned off by clicking this button here. And as you hold your mouse again over here, once again, OST for open survey tool space and CST for closed survey tool space. So if I type CST, survey tool space is closed. OST, it's open. So let's just click back to the PowerPoint here. So the prospector tab is the access to the civil 3D data. The settings tab is the access to the civil 3D settings and the object and label styles. Let's just go back to that again. Settings tab, if I right click on the drawing name, I can edit drawing settings. And this is all my civil 3D settings such as units and scale, transformation settings for grid to ground, coordinate conversions, default object layers for the layers that objects are placed on, standard abbreviations and some ambient settings. Panorama, properties and tool palettes, just other aspects of the Civil 3D interface. The Panorama window is a multi-serving object editor for points, alignments, and grading. So for example, if I go back to Prospector and right click on my existing topo point group and select Edit Points. Oops, let's try that again. There it is. This is the panorama window and it's showing the point editor here and you can edit the points. Similarly, if I was to select a group of points here with my control and shift keys and right click and edit points, just those selected points are displayed in the panorama window. So the panorama window is a multi-serving window. It's you know a description key editor. So if I go to the points menu in settings and then under description key sets, you can right click and then select edit keys and now the panorama window is a description key editor as well as a point editor. This allows me to close the current vista which in this case is the point editor leaving the description key editor available and then I can close that panorama window again. So it's a multi-serving civil 3D object editor. AutoCAD properties 
window that's displayed with Control-1. Here's your AutoCAD properties window. You pick a line or a polyline, displays information on that polyline. And one thing about the AutoCAD properties window is that it is becoming more and more friendly with uh, Civil 3D objects. So a lot of the properties for Civil 3D objects, in this case a parcel, are displayed. You can edit the name, you can change the style, you can change the label style, how the label is pinned, whether or not tooltips are active, and it gives you information on that particular object. So AutoCAD properties window can also be accessed by going to the Home tab and clicking this button right here or on the command line as you can see typing the word properties. And similarly if you were to pick an object in the drawing such as this arc you could right click and select properties to display the AutoCAD properties window. And this is a, I'll just move this view window up here, this view panel. And I might choose to put this on the right hand side and position it as such. And that's not a bad way to configure your user interface because AutoCAD properties is something that you're always going to be working with. And then tool palettes for commonly used Civil 3D and AutoCAD tools. To display your tool palettes, home tab of the ribbon and your palettes panel, this button here, or control 3 or typing in tool palettes on the command line. And tool palettes in Civil 3D are most often used to display your sub-assemblies for your road design. So this is the tool palette window. These are your palettes and palettes are organized into palette groups. So if you right click on the title bar I can load a different palette group in this case Civil Multiview Box and that will load a different palette group in this case it's showing blocks. If I right click I can load the samples and in this case we have hatches and fills and also some commands so you can work with these tool palettes and put a lot of inf information and commands on these tool palettes a very powerful component of AutoCAD in Civil 3D workspaces to configure the user interface this was discussed in a bit more detail in lesson one and then finally the fifth lesson, lesson two, addresses report creation. You do that in the toolbox. So let's click back to Civil 3D. And the toolbox is a tab on the tool space window. And you can expand the palettes panel of the home tab of the ribbon. And you can see toolbox. And then here is the toolbox tab. And these are your reports. There's a few other functions in here, but if we wanted to do a parcel report, we can do an area report, for example, and right click and execute that report and click OK. And an error happened here because in this case, Firefox is my default web browser. So you will need to set your default web browser to Internet Explorer to make that work but to create a report you simply right click and execute the report and the report will be executed so once again um, we're not supporting our AutoCAD Civil 3D 2010 isn't supporting Firefox from a report creation perspective so that concludes the overview of lesson 2 in Unit 1.